Welcome to the Deli Dixon's channel. Today I'm going to be continuing my review of What If. Marvel Disney's What If T'Challa had become Star-Lord. So this is basically what if Yandu had picked up T'Challa instead of Peter Quill. And T'Challa becomes Star-Lord instead of Black Panther. And it's a space traveling, space faring adventure. First, I gotta say, doing this podcast was really emotional. I'm not even sure I'm familiar with Chadwick Boseman's total career. I loved him immediately in Captain America Civil War as Black Panther. To me, that's his best Black Panther. I think the movie's okay, but I'm not the biggest fan. It's good. His appearances as Black Panther, though, have been, always been spot on, and I really love the character. But I guess it's a personal thing about, you know, what happened in my life, and it's a crazy story, but, you know, I want to pay respects to Chaswick Boseman. I put um, R.I.P. on the thumbnail. I thought it was appropriate. This is his last performance. And looking back, um, you know, he's... Like Justified is a funny thing that he was on a TV show. He's done some good movies and such. But there's just something special about people. And there's a psychology to it also about why we get attached to actors and actresses and performers. And he's, I think, one of them. Um, I saw something really special with him. He was giving some speech at an award place. I think he got an award for something. And as he was telling the story, he was telling the story of when he was in college, going to school, someone came in and paid his tuition, and it was Denzel Washington. And he happened to have Denzel Washington in the audience and took advantage to thank him. See, already I'm getting goosebumps and tearing up. Um, I don't know. People leave too young. They leave us on this journey. And... You want to remember them i always will i do my construct uh before i go to bed and i think he's been in there a couple of times and i just have a connection to maybe it's just the time like i said it's a weird time in my life right now with uh, my fiance's birthday passing she would have been 51 52 in any case i'm here to review what if episode two and some of the voices are excellent. The cinematography. This is great animation. I think they're doing a top-notch job. But I get annoyed. So first off, I'm annoyed that they're portraying the Watcher visually like Eternity. And it's annoying me. It annoys me that I got the movie Guardians of the Galaxy and not the original comic book team. I love Guardians of the Galaxy, the first movie. I like the second one a lot. Some of the portrayals are so unique and, and a great perspective on them but i thought this would reach into you know showing some of the other guardians of the galaxy that were originally vance astro uh, charlie 27 a lot of characters so i wasn't that interested in this story and as soon as i saw thanos as a good guy sort of and his portrayal I was getting a little like, eh. And then the portrayal of the collector. I don't know about um, T'Challa's role in this, but if he was picked up by Yandu at a young age, I'm going to guess, I just have to assume he does not have the flower power. So how the fuck is he doing what he's doing without his suit on, without jets on his feet or super things, and then... I, I just didn't, there was so much I didn't like about it. However, this is totally personal. If I'm going to be a critic and I'm going to give it a, a recommendation, I totally will. This is, people are going to love this. You like the movie portrayals, you want to see what if Black Panther became Star-Lord, this is it. You want to see um, space, a little cosmic action mixed in, you got it, but... On all the levels, I wasn't interested. I wasn't pulled in to the story. And yes, it could be because of my preoccupation with, you know, getting the thumbnail ready and 
putting the R.I.P. Chadwick Boseman in, and okay, but it, it wasn't in my in my thought or even an idea while I watched it. Like it's, it's, I don't know, it's hard to explain, but maybe it's there subconsciously. Like I'm listening to him. I know he's the voice. It was like his last performance, that type of thing, and maybe it did cloud it. But I want to say the voice acting is great. You got almost all the same people doing the voices, which is great. So you didn't get Drax and things like that. But you didn't really need it. To, I think the guy who does the Hulk did him Fred Tatascore or something like that. <laughs> I never get his name right. But they got Karen Gillan, Michael Rocker. Uh, Karen Gillan plays Nebula. Michael Roker, Rooker plays Yondu. And... Josh Brolin even did Thanos. The collector was Benicio del Toro. There's a little tiny thing with ego, and that's Kurt Russell. He actually does the voice. And there's Seth Green. There's a lot of good things in this. There's no thing that pulls you out and is off, really. Uh, Fred Tadeschiori. He does the Hulk, I think, a lot. Good voice actor. Um, again, the narration is good. The animation is great. You feel the weight of things. Uh, the sound effects are excellent. Uh, you feel um, in the in the place, and that's a really special thing for an animated show to do. Batman animated show did it so well. I really am impressed. Guess what? This isn't one of the what ifs. That's not for me. Fine. I'm just not gung ho happy like I was about the first one. But that's what's special, I think, about this show. There's going to be what-ifs about a whole bunch of things. And there might not be characters you'll like or renditions of your like that you like. There was a really big push for the Guardians of the Galaxy when they were reimagined. And Peter Quill became star. Um, not became star, but he became part of the Guardians of the Galaxy with a new team. And they sort of involved the original ones. They brought Vance Astro in and did a timeline type thing. Adam Warlock, that type of stuff. So the comics, um, I really love the comics. And like I said, I do love the first Guardians. And I really like the second one. I, I, I really like, enjoy them both immensely. But they, they don't feel, like I don't have an attachment to it. Like I do some other things. It's weird. It, and like I said, I can talk about the comic books. We'll just, you know, it'll go over people's heads, but... As a personal thing, I really don't feel immersed in this story. I didn't get caught up in it. I didn't really care about um, the character Black Panther being Star-Lord. And like I said, I started getting annoyed when they started showing portrayals of people. And I'm like, okay, all right, this is fun. And I could see people loving it. See, again, it's done well. It's done really good. I'm really impressed with the special effect, animation, the cinematography, voice acting. Like it all comes together well. This is really quality animation from Marvel, which is rare. I mean, I did mention, um, I still think uh, Hulk vs. Thor, Hulk vs. Wolverine. It was like one of the best things they've done in so long. Such a long time. And... Here we are at the second episode of What If, and I'm not uh, super imp uh, impressed with the episode itself. Everything about it, yes, but the story, no, I just, I just didn't feel connected to it. <clears throat> and again, there is so much to love about the show, I would, in a, in a second, not only complain about the things I'm complaining about, but also trash the show in a heartbeat. I don't... You know, I'm not playing Marvel fanboy type thing. Although I do admit to having a... I love Marvel, DC, Image, Independent. I just love comic book stuff. I'll give it all a try. Uh, Invincible. Fucking amazing. Uh, this is trying things new. And it's going to be hit and miss, I think, for a lot of people. But if you keep putting out the quality animation, the quality voice work, the quality sound. I mean, he moves his necklace, his chain. You feel it. It feels... You know, like they paid attention to things finally and really are giving people in 2021 really good animation. And that is uh, a great thing. And it's going to be, I think, an amazing show.
I usually give a show three episodes and if it catches me. But right away, I love the first one and the second one just didn't get me. But it's a what if story that it might not just interest me. Fine. I, it's like, but paying respects to Chadwick Bowman, I can't tell you how charismatic and how captivating he is as a was as a person. Like I said, um, a while ago, I saw him do that speech and his portrayal of uh, Black Panther will never be forgotten. It'll be legendary. And I'm just getting around. Like I said, this is one of those podcasts, one of those days I watch it. It just came out. Then I go to make the thumbnail and I didn't even do any other cursory stuff. The story... If people are interested, is like I said before, you got Yandu picks up T'Challa, and you see there's a different type of guardians formed, and that's fun. There's a um, different mood and method to these ravagers because T'Challa was the one who, um, you know, was around them and became there. Was the, was the young kid that they raised, and it's um. You know, hinted that uh, he changed Thanos' mind. But these things made my eyes roll and made me not really care. But these are things I think people are going to love. They're going to love the little flips and the little twists on things. Fine. But they, they just didn't interest me. And there comes in a um, a uh, apparent double cross as they're trying to do a big score to save the... Well, not save, but to help the galaxy. And they make a couple of jokes about Thanos' snap. As he's trying to convince people that it was actually a good idea. Because he never did it in this timeline. But basically they could find these embers. And just the smallest amount could bring life to worlds that are, um, you know, not habitable or whatever. And it could feed billions of people on millions of planets. It's a good, it's a opportunity that T'Challa has to convince Yondu that this is what they've been working for. And it gives you a different vibe. There is that vibe that they're the outlaws, and there's this Star Lord uh, twist in the beginning that mimics the movie Guardians. But when the child is revealed, they're like, "Oh shit, it's Star Lord! Should I bow?" All the stuff I think people are gonna love. But when it gets to, they got to do this heist, this apparent double cross, and then they gotta deal with the Collector. I just tuned out, and in my brain, I watched it, but. Never do I want to see a collect. Uh, well, in the comics, you know they they considered um, you know part of a race of beings that have been there for billions of years. They're connected in the sense that they consider themselves somewhat related because of their age. Anyway, I don't want to see this cosmic level being who deals with Galactus and the entities of the universe, uh, Mistress Death. Going into a fist fight with T'Challa. Not only is he not T'Challa with, as the Black Panther with the flower power, which even if I give him that, just I, I just didn't want to see it. I didn't want to see his portrayal here done like this. I didn't want to see Thanos' portrayal done like this. So these are the things, you know, so the crux of the episode lies with go to the collector on face value, it looks like a legitimate thing, but there's a plan to get these embers so they could save galaxies and planets. And this confrontation is just um, probably great for people. They're going to love it. Like I said, I recommend this totally. I just didn't care. I don't want to see this, uh, you know, elders of the universe beings just throwing fists and Hitting button, you know, it was just, I guess you have to do it, it has to be serviceable. But what I, what I would rather see is enlist Silver, Silver Surfer, or if you can use the Guardians of the Galaxy, put Quasar on it as the female, I don't give a shit. Although my favorite character is Quasar Wendell Vaughn. Get more cosmic. This, this episode shouldn't have been cosmic on a scale unseen before. So I think that's what like goes on the back of my mind. The great animation, great sound, music, everything, voice acting. And they told a cosmic story that was put down on a level I didn't appreciate. Now, that doesn't mean 
everybody else is not going to appreciate it. That's what I'm trying to at least be honest about and recognize. I want to see cosmic energy. I want to see the threats universal or cosmic or solar system wide, galaxy wide. And the Guardians of the Galaxy had an opportunity here to do that, and it didn't. Now, yes, it's a more personal story, and it's told great, made even more profound that Chad, Chadwick Boseman is not with us no more, and that this is kind of his last thing he worked on. Um, so I'm so mixed on this. Um, I see so much greatness. It is just not the story for me, not the portrayals I wanted to see, but I think that's part of this show's charm. It's going to wow me and it's going to not interest me because that's his function. What if, what if this is that now that might be a weird formula because I was asking a friend, I might've mentioned it on the last podcast. Do you think they'll revisit something that's so popular? You know, think about a TV show, right? You see a character and he doesn't show up again and you don't watch the show or whatever. You wonder what happened to the character. And you can go animation too. Batman. Well, Justice League was interesting because the Justice League cartoon was really focused on seven of them. It was like two seasons of excellent storylines. I thought the art I never really got into. But then they started the Justice League Society or something like that and it was so much fun but every episode you didn't know who was on the team and i could see that becoming a problem here for marvel that hey look you know i don't want to see if luke cage becomes spider-man well i mean that might be interesting i'm not saying that's even happening <laughs> i didn't see that but it's i think you know the premise is a, a real tricky one however if you keep pulling off this animation this quality of voice, this quality of sound, the feeling of weight transference in the animation, in the episode is, you know, you don't get it. You don't get that feeling in a lot of it, and even some of the best ones. So this is taking a lot from different types of animation to make it work. So stellar performances, stellar work, kudos. And even the story, you know, I'm not even saying critically it's full of holes and makes no sense. It, the plot, it just wasn't for me. And there you go. Episode 2 of What If. What if T'Challa became Star-Lord? I think this sh show is going to be a weird one. <laughs> and it's, I think it's supposed to be. And I hope people enjoy it. I recommend it totally. The third one will be, you know really cementing my opinion on it but unlike a tv show let's say justified you know i watched the first three episodes i'm hooked or burn notice and things that i've done podcasts on uh x-men 95 you give good stuff and you put it out there someone like me will forgive the hey that just wasn't for me i'm not interested in uh t'challa becoming star lord and what would happen if Thanos was half good in this predicament and gets fucking electrocuted and falls down and gets beat up, you know, things like that. But he does pull his weight here and there, and he's, he's impressive to a certain extent, but not to the levels I want to see. And anyway, I really enjoy watching these things. This one just didn't captivate me, but I see the quality there. Let's hope it continues, and I think it will. I think everybody should give it a shot. I wish everybody's doing well. And my best to you and yours. Take care.